We're going to be reading Mark 2, verse 1 to 12 from the Passion Translation. Jesus heals a paralysed man. Several days later, Jesus returned to Capernaum and the news quickly spread that he was back in town. Soon there were so many people crowded inside the house to hear him that there was no more room, even outside the door. While Jesus was preaching the word of God, four men arrived carrying a paralysed man. But when they realised that they couldn't get, even get near him because of the crowd, they went up on top of the house and tore away the roof above Jesus' head. And when they had broken through, they lowered the paralysed man on a stretcher right down in front of him. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he said to the paralysed man, My son, your sins are now forgiven. Uh, this offended some of the religious scholars who were present, and they reasoned among themselves. Who does he think he is to speak this way? This is blasphemy for sure. Only God himself can forgive sins. Jesus supernaturally perceived their thoughts and said to them, Why are you being so sceptical? Which is easier, to say that to this paralysed man, your sins are now forgiven, or stand up and walk? But to convince you that the Son of Man has been given authority to forgive sins, I say to this man, stand up, pick up your stretcher and walk home. Immediately, the man sprang to his feet in front of everyone and left for home. When the crowds witnessed this miracle, they were awestruck. They shouted praises to God and said, we've never seen anything like this before. Okay, and now I'm going to pray. Uh, dear God, I just pray for Ian. I just pray that you would bless him as he preaches, Lord. And I pray that... Uh, and I thank you uh, that you have the power to heal, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Elliot and uh, Karis Joy for doing the reading. It's been fantastic, hasn't it? All the way through this Jesus Way series, we've had some of our young people do the reading every week. It was also fantastic, wasn't it, in the family time, not just to have the interns who did a brilliant, brilliant family time. If you missed it, then you need to do the catch up to catch up with it. But it was also lovely to have our very own Restore Kids doing My Lighthouse and uh, you wouldn't have seen it at home, but the worship team in the studio were doing their, all the actions and everything else with, with My Lighthouse before we started the service. It's great Great to have you with us this morning. Uh, if you've uh, been tuning in to Restore regularly, you'll know that over the last few weeks we've been looking at a series that we've called The Jesus Way. And what we're really focusing on as we do this series is we're thinking about how in the most weird of seasons can we get hold of living life the way that Jesus lived life? And our theme verse, or the verse that we've picked on, uh, especially for this series, is from Matthew chapter 11, a well-known verse. But Jesus says in that verse, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And he goes on and he says, Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And if we leave those uh, verses up just for a, a couple of moments, I think it's just worth reflecting on that, because this is the most incredible season, isn't it? And like you, um, I felt it quite ominous yesterday uh, when I heard that there was going to be a news conference and the prospect of going into lockdown once more, it's really easy to feel <sighs> and quite deflated by that. And yet Jesus says, come to me when you're feeling weary, come to me when you're feeling deflated, come to me when you're feeling weighed down, receive from me and I will give you rest. And as a church, we're called Restore because we believe that God's spirit breathing on us puts God's rest in us, but also releases God's restoration across our lives. And so we're looking at how we can live in the weirdest of seasons, but live it knowing the presence of God and the power of God and knowing change and hope and God's goodness with us every step of the way. And today we're looking at the whole issue of dealing with sickness the Jesus way. And I love it the way that God works because we planned this series months ago. We had no idea that we would be dealing with the issue of sickness the very day after a, a second lockdown has been uh, announced. And one of the things I want to say at the very start is Jesus didn't deal with sickness, he defeated sickness. 
Jesus doesn't just help you cope with something. Jesus is able to bring total transformation. And I want to say there's not one sickness that Jesus doesn't have the power to bring healing and breakthrough over. There's not one recorded incident in the Gospels where Jesus is not able to heal a sick person. So I want to say really, really clear this morning, really, really clearly, Jesus is greater than the power of COVID-19. Jesus is able to release healing. Whatever is going on in your life today, Jesus is willing and able to release healing. And in a little while, we're going to pray for that healing power of Jesus to be released. And not only that, but Jesus is able to bring and release his healing across this nation and indeed across the world. And so the story that we're looking at today is from Mark chapter 2. It's quite a well-known story. It's a well-known story because it's uh, quite a bizarre story really because so many people are flocking to see Jesus that there's this paralytic guy and his friends get this idea of let's take him so that he might meet Jesus because maybe he'll get healed. And when they get there, there's so many people there that they can't get near to Jesus. And so they think about it for a minute and they get a bit of inspiration. Now in the Middle East at the time, in Israel, it was quite common to have steps up the side of your house and the steps up the side of your house would go to a sun roof, a sun terrace and in the summer actually a lot of people would sleep on their sun terrace and their sun terrace would be made of uh, branches and it would be caked in mud that would dry hard like clay and so these guys had an idea, do you know if we're going to get this man to Jesus why don't we climb up the side of the stairs, uh, lift him up on his stretcher, take him on the roof and then we'll dig through the roof and then we'll be able to get him to Jesus. Now, uh, you're probably listening to that thinking, that would be fine as long as it wasn't my house, uh, because I wouldn't love for my house to be ruined in terms of the roof. What's interesting in Mark's story, I don't know whether you noticed it as it was read to us, it actually says Jesus was at home. And so if you've ever thought, whose house did this happen at? Well, most theolog theologians, if I can say the word, um, will say it was one of either two uh, answers in terms of whose house it was. I Either number one, it was Jesus' own house, in which case he wasn't really that worried about the roof, um, or it was Simon Peter's roof because Jesus maybe was staying with Simon Peter because in the previous chapter he goes to stay at Simon Peter's and actually he was, he was Simon Peter's mother-in-law. So he starts his healing ministry there. So if you wondered whose roof was ruined, um, then it was either Jesus' own house or it was the house of Simon Peter. Of course, Jesus had his background as a carpenter, so I don't think anybody worried about the mess in the roof and they particularly didn't when the guy got healed. Now, I'm not going to speak for very long this morning honest I know you never believe preachers when they say that I'm going to aim to be finished by 12 o'clock so in just 10 minutes time so I'm just going to pick three simple things from this passage I'm going to talk for a few minutes about each of them and then we're going to go back into worship and we're going to uh, start praying for anyone who would love to be prayed for today we're going to pray specifically about sickness but actually we're happy to pray about anything and we've got prayer teams all lined up and ready to go so three simple things to draw out of this passage. Number one, Jesus never found it difficult to draw a crowd. Jesus never found it difficult to draw a crowd. I don't know if you've ever read the Gospels before. If you want to start reading the Bible, start reading the, Gosp start reading the Gospels because they're all the stories about Jesus. What you find is Jesus was such fun to be around. Over this series, we've done three weeks before this week, we've... Uh, looked at Jesus calming a storm, saying one word, and uh, waves were calmed, and the storm totally disappeared. We've seen him heal a guy who was paralyzed for 38 years and bring a uh, total life transformation uh, for him. And last week when Stuart was talking, he talked about a guy who died called Lazarus, who Jesus brought back to life uh, many days after he died. And so when you read the story of Jesus, you find that Jesus came as God's son, as God's love gift to the world. And Jesus showed us how much God loves the world and how much God wants to release his goodness into the world. And one of the ways that he demonstrated it was by doing miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And nearly every one of them, or a significant number of them, was, uh, was healings uh, that were uh, the content, the substance of the miracles. And so one of the things we know is that Jesus 
comes to bring healing. And when we welcome Jesus into our lives, we welcome his healing presence. And because of that, people used to flock to wherever Jesus was. I had a friend who's a little bit of a crazy woman, and uh, she lived quite a wild life. Um, but she went to Spain on holiday, and at the end of her holiday, she met a group of Christians, and uh, they were telling her all the wonderful things that Jesus did, and so she came to the point of saying, do you know what, if that's what Jesus is really like, I'd like to have that God in my life. And so she prayed a prayer, she invited Jesus into her life. Now, the next day she was coming back to the UK, sadly on the last evening of her holiday, she was involved in a car accident that meant that she badly broke her leg. So she had to go to hospital, have a leg uh, put in plaster. She was flown back to the UK, was then hospitalised to have a leg in traction, and she was put in hospital for six weeks. So she heard the good news of Jesus. Uh, she wasn't able to get out and meet with Christians in the UK. So she just sat in hospital and she thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read my Bible. And so she picked up her Bible and she read through the Gospels and she was amazed with all the miraculous healings that Jesus did. She then got to the book of Acts, which is the birth of the church, and she read through the book of Acts and it was miracle after miracle, healing after healing after healing. And she was like, I cannot wait to get to church. This is going to be so exciting. And then after six weeks, she got discharged from hospital. She found a local church and went into it and was so disappointed because nobody was praying or expecting healing. And yet it says at the end of the Gospels, just before Jesus is going back up to heaven, Jesus says to his church, he says, greater works than these you will do. And his last words to the disciples, he says, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. I give it to you. You now go in that authority. And the church is meant to move in the miraculous power of Jesus. And as a church, we're committed to seeing Jesus at work, which is why we're taking Sundays like today. And we don't just do it because it's a nice thing to pray for other people. We do it because Jesus has defeated the power of sickness and death. And we believe as we pray and as we call on the name of Jesus, he can bring life transformation to you, even right here and right now, this morning. Second thing I want to draw out of the passage is faith-filled friends are always helpful to have. Faith-filled friends are always helpful to have. Now, sometimes I think when we talk about healing, uh, it's easy, particularly if you're sick at the moment, because when you're sick, you don't feel great anyway, and it's easy to feel quite low in your, inside yourself as well as being physically sick. So in those moments, you think, oh, I don't know whether I've got faith. You know, I've got faith for someone else to get healed. I've got faith for them because they're a good Christian. I don't really know whether God uh, loves me. I don't really know whether God cares for me. I don't really know whether it can happen for me. Let me tell you, God loves you, he's for you, and he can heal you right in this moment. And what's interesting in this story, sometimes in the Gospels you find people that, uh, that demonstrate their own faith in incredible ways. There's a woman who is bleeding for 12 uh, years and she pushes through a crowd, which is something that she shouldn't have done in the culture of the day, but she pushes through a crowd to get to Jesus. She touches the edge of his garment and as soon as she does that, reaches out and touches it, she gets healed. And Jesus stops because he feels the power of God come out of him and he says, who touched me? And then this woman confesses and she got totally totally healed. And Jesus says to her, he says, he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. And sometimes we end up thinking, oh, I need to have lots of faith if I'm going to be healed. What's interesting in this story is the man we know absolutely nothing about, whether he was a follower of Jesus, whether he was keen about Jesus, whether he liked God or not, we know absolutely nothing about his faith. What we do know is he had a group of faith-filled friends and they brought him to Jesus. And when he gets healed, Jesus says, because of the faith of your friends. Let me tell you today, if you're tuning in, it doesn't matter whether you've got loads of faith, whether you've got a little bit of faith, or whether you've got no faith. You this morning have faith-filled friends that believe that God can heal. I'm happy to be your friend this morning. I'm happy to be your faith-filled friend who believes that God can heal. Why am I happy to do that? Because I've seen God's healing power. About 10 years ago, we had a morning like this. Well, it wasn't quite like this because we weren't in our homes. We were together in church uh, the way that I actually prefer. I love doing church that way. 
At the end of the meeting, though, we offered prayer for people. There was a guy who'd been in the church for a number of years, and he had a smashed up foot. Um, he was working on an engine a few uh, years before, and the engine sadly uh, toppled over and fell on his foot and smashed his foot. And ever since then, he'd had to walk with a brace around his foot. He came to our healing meeting. Uh, two people prayed for him. Uh, I spoke to them afterwards. They didn't feel particularly faithful, but they believed that Jesus could heal. As they prayed for him, the colour of his foot started to change. He felt his foot start to tingle. When they finished, he took his brace off and he got up and he started to jump. He started to test his ankle and then he went for a run around the school grounds. We uh, at that stage were meeting in a school on a Sunday. So he went for a run around the school grounds and then he came back in and his foot was totally healed. Jody, if you're wondering where she is at the moment, she's in Zambia. The first time I visited Zambia uh, was seven or eight years ago. And, uh, and a guy, Bill, who was running a school there, one of the things he used to like to do was to take me on a walk around the local community. And we would offer to pray for anyone. And it was the most Jesus-like uh, experience I think I've ever had. Because uh, in Zambia at that time, the way the local community was, the whole community would follow you as you went house to house praying for people. I think at one stage we had 53 people following us as we went house to house praying for people. And he took me to see a lady called Beauty. And he warned me beforehand that she was really, really suffering. I had no idea um, really what I was walking into. When he took me to Beauty's house, she was lying on a mat in front of her home. She was as thin as I've ever seen anyone, and she looked literally at death's door. Uh, he told me she was suffering from HIV and AIDS and a number of other illnesses, uh, complications from it. We knelt down, we prayed for beauty, we saw no physical change, then we got up and we moved to the next house. I went back to visit Bill a year later. I was amazed when he took me to visit Beauty and we went to her house and she was massively different because in that moment God had moved and the power of sickness had to give way to the power of Jesus. Their are stories from a while ago. Let me tell you, a couple of months ago, um, towards the end of the time that we were still able to meet on a Sunday, uh, I went over to our Enfield congregation. We had a time of ministry at the end. I went to pray for Malcolm. Hi, Malcolm. Great to have you watching in this morning. I prayed for Malcolm. As I prayed for Malcolm, the power of the Holy Spirit came and rested on Malcolm. Malcolm fell over, fell on the floor, felt God do something in his body. After we finished praying, he got up, went, checked himself, and he was totally healed by the power of God. In the times that we've been doing live stream, uh, about a month into live stream, we had a sense on a Sunday morning that God wanted to do something around eye issues. And uh, so we prayed on the live stream, encouraged people if they had an eye problem to invite Jesus to come as their healer. Do you know, the week after that, I had two people write to me to say how God had touched their eyes and brought healing. Jesus is able to heal and I'm willing to be your faith-filled friend this morning that will pray for you to experience the healing power of Jesus. Last thing that I want to say, so number one, Jesus found it never, never difficult to draw a crowd. Number two, faithful friends are always helpful to have. Number three, sometimes the cause is not what you think it is. Sometimes the cause is not what you think it is. Uh, what's interesting in this story is when the friends lower the guy to meet with Jesus, you expect him to say, you expect Jesus to say, be healed. He doesn't. He actually says, your sins are forgiven, which seems like a strange thing. But then after that, once the sins are forgiven, he then releases healing to the guy. What I think is interesting about that is Jesus deals with an inner issue before he deals with an outer issue. And the reality is for all of us, we're spirit, body and soul. And sometimes the body is impacted by the spirit and the soul. It's the inner things. So sometimes we carry a pain and because we haven't resolved the inner pain, actually it weighs down our body and sometimes it can physically make us sick. Uh, David writes about this in the Psalms. In Psalm 32, he writes this. He says, how blessed is he whose wrongdoing is forgiven, whose sin is covered. 
How blessed is a person whose guilt the Lord does not take into account and in whose, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. Do you see that? David's saying, when I didn't confess my sin, when I, when I carried sin and guilt and shame on the inside, my body on the outside wasted away. And it goes on and it says, actually, when I asked God to forgive me my sin, something changed. And there's a great uh, verse in Proverbs 17 that says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. I know we all love stories. So I'll tell you another story. The guy who was uh, the best man when Chris and I got married, uh, his mother was a, was a real character, had an awful marriage and uh, was really scarred and hurt by that. Uh, wonderfully, she came to know Jesus. Uh, when she came to know Jesus, one of the big things she had to work through was getting to the point that she was willing to forgive her husband and forgive the abuse, for, uh, forgive the uh, adultery, uh, forgive the breakdown of, uh, of their marriage. She wasn't able at that time to work because she had a back injury. When she reached the point of forgiving her husband, or ex-husband, the very next week when she went to church, she got prayer for her back, and her back was supernaturally healed. Now, I think God did something on the inside, and then when he was given permission to move on the inside, something happened on the outside. We have a team ready to pray this morning, and on the chat uh, streams, uh, you can connect to a Zoom meeting. They're all people that are used to praying for people for inside issues or for outside issues. And actually, right from now, you can start dialing with a Zoom. Uh, you're going to be put into a confidential uh, uh, room with uh, two prayers, and they will pray with you and for you. We're willing to pray this morning for every issue. We're willing to pray for physical issues. We're willing to pray for emotional issues. Today, if you're just lonely and you want someone to stand with you and bless you, we're willing to pray for that. We've got a big prayer team. You're not going to run us out. Uh, don't think, oh, there won't be enough for me, or don't think, oh, uh, they'll never get around to me. Tune into the Zoom. We will stay on Zoom for as long as we need to, to be able to pray for every single person that's wanting prayer. Why? Because Jesus brings good news, and the good news is that God is able and willing to heal. You will have seen that the band have come back behind me now. It was uh, nearly 20 minutes as opposed to 15, but for me, that's still moving under the power of the Holy Spirit to get through a sermon that quickly. Uh, what we're going to do next is, uh, is we're going to take a moment and we're just going to worship Jesus. Do you know, healing doesn't come because of the quality of a prayer team. Healing doesn't come because of the excellence of a sermon, and it was a pretty good one. Healing comes because Jesus is good and he's able to move in your heart and your spirit right now. And so we want to take a moment where we just present ourselves afresh to Jesus and we honour him and we praise him. So wherever you are right now, maybe you want to um, stand up. Maybe you want to reach out to Jesus. Maybe you want to put down your device for a moment and just welcome the Spirit of God and welcome the presence of Jesus. And I'm going to pray, and as I pray, the uh, worship team are going to take us on. And let's invite Jesus to come. Do you know, we've had people get healed and restore just as we've worshipped. Maybe just now as we reach out, you won't actually need to dial into the Zoom meeting. You'll get directly healed by Jesus right here, right now. Wouldn't that be amazing? That's the kind of thing that Jesus does. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. The truth is that you came to defeat the power of the evil one. And thank you, you came to defeat the power of sickness and death. And we thank you, Jesus, that you reign in heaven right now. Thank you that you're seated at the right hand of Father in heavenly places. Thank you that every knee has to bow and every tongue has to confess. Thank you every sickness has to give way to the power of the name of Jesus. And in these moments, we lift you up, Jesus, and we celebrate you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we invite right now for the power of your spirit to fall. 
We invite for the power of your spirit to fall in this place right here. But in every home where someone is watching right now, we welcome, we invite the power of the spirit of God. We say, let your spirit fall right now. Lord, will you release hope? Lord, will you release faith, Lord? Will you release supernatural healing in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. And let's all start reaching out to Jesus right now. Like I say, if you want to stand, stand. If you want to stand with one another at home, start praying for one another at home. Start doing that. But let's engage our spirits. Let's reach out to God. And let's welcome the presence of his spirit and the power of his spirit right now.